ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلوات الله والسلام عليه اما بعد يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله واحسن الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار ثم اما بعد i want you to really reflect and to think about those verses that come in that come in khutbah al hajah the sermon of need and I want you with me like it ta'ala to spend some time doing this go over the tafsir of these ayat reflect and ponder over their meanings and reflect and ponder how they impact your life and how they are relevant to your life in any event this is not the topic of today's discussion The topic of today's discussion it is due to the fact that we all sometimes get it wrong and we all sometimes we do wrong we are not always at our best we are not always on our game as they say but sometimes we come up short and this applies to all of us to myself and to everyone who hears my voice and everyone else those who don't even hear my voice it applies unto them the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said kullu adam khata wa khayru khata'in at-tawwabun that all of the children of adam they make mistakes they make sins and the best of those who make sins and make mistakes then they are those who repent the best of those who sin are those who ask for forgiveness and who repent unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who make a tawbah so i want you to have this on your mind because in order to be successful then we have to repent unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how much should we repent unto Allah a little bit no we should repent to Allah in great abundance we should be of those who oft repent unto allah subhanahu wa ta'ala meaning we should be from those who repent unto allah all the time in other words right we should repent unto allah all the time because just like we are always sinning then we have to always be repenting bismillah ta'ala but what i want everyone to understand is that no matter how bad you are no matter how low you have sunk no matter the atrocities and what you have done repent unto allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he will forgive you so it is not too late to get it straight but at the same time don't wait and this is because there will come a point where there is no more repentance 
So while we are still at a time where we can repent unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then we have to repent unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We cannot afford to squander this opportunity. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in his noble book, he tells us, يَوْمَ يَأْتِي بَعْضُ آيَاتِ رَبِّكَ that on the day some of the signs from your Lord, they come. لَا يَنْفَعُوا نَفْسًا إِيمَانُهَا لَمْ تَكُنْ آمَنَتْ مِنْ قَبْلُ Allah Ta'ala, He says, that on the day that the signs of your Lord, they come, a soul will not benefit from believing if it did not believe from before. The ulama, they mention that what is meant by this, it means that when the sun rises from its place of setting, those who didn't believe at that point, then they're not going to benefit from their belief. There comes in Sahih al-Bukhari as a tafsir to this ayah. The statement of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam: لا تقوم الساعة حتى تطلع الشمس من مغربها. That the hour will not be established until the sun rises from its place of setting. إذا رأه الناس آمن من عليها. That whoever sees this from the people at that time, then those who are on the earth, then they're going to believe. Now they're going to believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, فَذَلِكَ حِينَ لَا يَنْفَعُ نَفْسًا إِيمَانُهَا لَمْ تَكُنْ آمَنَتْ مِنْ قَبْلُ The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, but this is the time where a person, where a soul will not benefit by believing if it didn't believe before this point so there's going to come a point where there is no more toba when the sun rises from its place of setting then there's no more toba so we have to repent unto allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before this time before this time Naam. and i want you to really reflect on that because bila shak wa bila raib, there are a number of times where Tawbah after them will not benefit. So we have to rush and hasten to repenting unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, إِنَّمَا تَوْبَةُ عَلَى اللَّهِ لِلَّذِينَ يَعْمَنُونَ السُّوءَ بِجَهَالَةِ ثُمَّ يَتُوبُونَ مِنْ قَلِيبَةِ فَأُولَٰئِكَ يَتُوبُ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says that verily, repentance will only be granted by Allah to those people who do evil out of ignorance. And then they repent unto Allah from a close time frame. After it shortly, فَأُولَٰئِكَ يَتُوبُ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ Then these are the ones whom Allah ta'ala, he will accept their repentance. وَكَانَ اللَّهُ عَنِيمًا حَكِيمًا And verily Allah, He is the all-knowing, the all-wise. وَلَيْسَ تَتَوْبَةُ لِلَّذِينَ يَعْمَنُونَ السَّيِّئَاتِ حَتَّى إِذَا حَضَرَ أَحَدَهُمُ الْمَوْتِ قَالَ إِنِّي تُبْتُ الْآنِ And tawbah will not be granted, repentance will not be granted to those who death it comes to them. They are in the midst of dying. Then they say, Now I repent. Now I repent. Nor is repentance, nor will repentance be accepted for those who die while they are disbelievers. Alima. Allah Ta'ala, He says what means? These ones, those who wait until death comes, and then now they want to repent, 
There's no repentance for them. Those who die and they are disbelievers, there is no repentance for them. But rather, what is awaiting them? Allah Ta'ala, he says, these ones we have prepared for them an extremely painful punishment, an extremely painful chastisement. So, the individual who waits until death comes, or the individual who dies upon other than Islam, there's no repentance for them. So if we want to benefit, then we have to, as Allah Ta'ala commands us, as we just heard in Khutbat Al-Hajjah, فَلَا تَمُوتُنَّ إِلَّا وَأَنْتُمْ مُسْلِمُونَ So do not die except that you are Muslims, that you believe in Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And our only way to do that is that we have to live as Muslims. So we have to be Muslim. And we cannot wait until death comes, and then now we want to repent. But we have to repent before this time, before this time, before death comes. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Inna Allah Azza wa Jal. He said, Very Allah, Verily Allah Azza wa Jal, Yaqbilu Tawbah, Tawbah al Abd, that he accepts the repentance of the slave, meaning the Muslim slave. Naam. Ma lam yugar as long as they do not yugar ghir. Meaning, as long as they are not in the throes of death where they are gargling, as long as they are not right about to die. Now at this point where death is inevitable and the individual is about to die, then there is no toba for that person. It will not be accepted. Let us reflect and let us go back bin Allah ta'ala. On those who their tawbah it will be accepted. Allah Ta'ala He says, Inna tawbatu, that verily tawbah is only, is only Allah Lilladina is only will be only granted by Allah to those. Ma'am. So we want to see who are those who they will get their repentance accepted. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says, In nama that tawbah is only for them. These are the only ones who their tawbah will be accepted, who their repentance will be accepted. So we have to know what are their characteristics, who are they, and what does this verse mean? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his verse, it could be found in Surah and nisa and it is verse 17, okay? So those who have access to a mushaf, inshallah ta'ala, the translation if you need, uh, grab so you can read along, inshallah ta'ala. Naam, make note of it. Take notes, inshallah ta'ala. So what is meant by, or who are those who their tawbah will be accepted? Allah ta'ala, he says, who are they? These are the ones who ya'maloon as bi jahala. They are those who they do evil out of ignorance. Naam, they are those who do evil out of ignorance. Who are those who do evil out of ignorance? And what does that mean? Does that mean that a, that a person doesn't know that this thing is haram? And then only if you don't know it's haram and you do it, then you could repent. But if you know it's haram and you do it, then there's no repentance for you. Is this what we are to understand? Of course, the answer is no. It's not what it means. This is not what it means. <clears throat> the ulama, they mention, al-jahala ha-huna, that ignorance here, Jahalatul Amal, it means that a person acted in an ignorant manner. So ignorance here means that a person acted ignorantly. Even if they knew that this thing was impermissible. Even if they knew this thing was haram, they had aim, they had knowledge that it is haram. But they acted in an ignorant manner. Qala Qatada, Qatada he mentioned, Ajma'a. أصحاب رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم على أن كلما عصي الله به فهو جاهل أو فهو جهالة. نعم. He said that the companions of the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم they had a consensus. They had a consensus that everyone who disobeys Allah سبحانه وتعالى and commits the haram 
then this is from ignorance. This one who's acting ignorantly. Amdan kan awlam yakun. Whether they did it intentionally or they didn't do it intentionally. So they knew it was wrong and they did it ignorant. If they didn't know about it and they did it ignorant. Naam? Ignorant. Wa kullu man asiya Allah fa huwa jahil. And everyone who disobeys Allah, then they are ignorant. Naam? Meaning that they're acting in what? In an ignorant manner. So everyone who disobeys Allah, everyone who disobeys Allah, whether they are ignorant of the ruling or whether they know the ruling and act in a contradictory manner, then they are ignorant. Because to disobey Allah, then undoubtedly this is acting ignorantly. This is acting in a most ignorant manner. So what is meant by ignorance here, it just means what those who commit evil, those who commit evil, whether they know about it, they know it's haram, or they don't know about it, they don't know it's haram, then they are ignorant. Both the same. They are ignorant. Okay? So whoever does an evil action out of ignorance, acting ignorantly, and then they ask for repentance shortly thereafter. So what is min qareeb? Min qareebin. What does that mean? The ulama, they mention that tawbah, and this is the, the vast majority of the ulama of, of tafsir. Naam? They mention that at tawbah min qabl al maut. Then this means tawbah before death. Naam? So from qareeb, that they make repentance, min qareeb, then this means before they die. Before they yugharghir, before death reaches them, they are in the 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 end stages of death. This is what is meant by qareeb. So from the time the person makes that sin, all the way up until before they enter the stage, the last stage of death, where they yugharghir, when they have the the gurgles of death. Anything between those two times is what is meant by min qareeb. Okay, so this is why we say it's not too late, but at the same time, don't wait, because none of us knows when this point will come for us. We don't know. It may be 20 something years from now. It may be 20 something minutes from now for some of us. And for some of us, it may be 20 some odd seconds from now. So never wait nor hesitate when it comes to repent unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But rush to repent unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But know and have hope that if you do an action ignorantly, do an evil action ignorantly, and then you ask for forgiveness before you die, Allah ta'ala, he says, فَأُولَٰئِكَ يَتُوبُ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ Then these are the ones whom Allah ta'ala, he will accept their repentance. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I want you to reflect on this. Allah ta'ala, he ends this ayah by saying, وَكَانَ اللَّهُ عَلِيمًا حَكِيمًا And that verily Allah, he is the all-knowing. Allah Ta'ala, He knows everything. Damn. Allah Ta'ala, He knows everything. So I want you to understand that. The, everything that you have done from evil, every despicable thing, Allah knows it already. Allah knows it. Damn. But with that, with that, with your level of depravity, okay, Allah Ta'ala, He tells us He is Hakiman. He puts everything in His proper place. Nam, Allah Ta'ala, He's the all wise. He puts everything in his proper place because hikmah, wisdom, because wisdom is to put everything in his proper place. That's wisdom. So Allah Ta'ala already knows the dirt that you have done. Allah Ta'ala already knows the sin that you have done. But if you repent unto Allah Ta'ala after acting ignorantly and you do it, before you are in the final stages of death, before the sun rises from the west, then your tawbah will be accepted. Bismillahi ta'ala. Naam. And as the ulama, they mention, this is along with fulfilling the conditions of tawbah from those which were aforementioned. That is, before a person is in the final stages of death, 
before the sun rises from his west. Now, of course, an individual has to have net done. They have to be re remorseful, repentful for what they have done. They have to feel bad now for the sin that they have committed and that they have disobeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A person has to cease and desist from, the, from committing that sin. A person has to intend not to commit that sin again. They have to have a resolve. They're not going to do this again. Now, this doesn't mean that if they fall into it in the future, this will negate their past repentance. No. This means they have to have a resolve. A person can't repent from something intended to do it the next day. They can't repent from something and then they're planning on doing it in the next few hours. No. They have to repent from it and they intend not to go back to it. This doesn't mean they're not going to go back to it. They may go back to it. They may do it again. And if they do it again, then they repent all over again. That's it. But the past repentance, the past evil deeds that they repented from are wiped away. They're not there anymore. But so it's important that we have this. And if it involved the rights of someone, then we return to that person is right. So if we stole someone's money, then we give them back their money. If we stole their property, then we return the property or we return the value if we are no longer in possession of the item that was stolen. If we do these or we, if we fulfill these conditions, then the tawbah is it is accepted. Now, this is how we make tawbah into Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it's not too late to get it straight. It is not too late to get it straight. But at the same time, don't wait. This is just a reminder that I wanted to remind myself with and also you with bithnillahi ta'ala. فَنَكْتَفِي بِعَادَ الْقَدَرُ وَصَلَى اللَّهِ سَلَّمْ عَلَى نَبِيِّنَا مُحَمَّدٍ وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وجزاكم الله خيرا